Hey everyone, it's been quite some time since I made a video. So I want to share some things that I've been up to and specifically around the Vosquare ECU. We get a lot of emails and a lot of people have been contacting me about wanting to buy one of these. I'm really trying to get production up and running again. And over the fall, I actually ended up designing version 2.0 just to kind of clean everything up, make it easier to manufacture, cheaper, and just get all the little tiny uh, bugs worked out before that I had to keep making revisions and revisions over and over again. So everything's all sorted out. You can see I really cleaned up a lot of the routing and everything. Really just uh, made everything a lot neater, nicer, and better organized versus the original version. You can see I was able to get rid of all this circuitry. Really made things nice and neat. That old version was originally designed like, well not originally designed, but it stemmed from a version from five years ago. So it's time for a redesign just to clean everything up. And you can see I also added onboard wideband control. So this is a 14.7 module. So this will be an optional feature where you can get this module pre-installed along with uh, like a five foot harness and the uh, LSU 4.9 sensor as well. So that'll be like maybe an extra 75 bucks add on. And that'll really make it truly plug and play because before you had to have a wideband already and provide your own analog input. And now everything's basically on board where basically that extra uh, harness for the wideband that'll just be plugged into here That'll run your downpipe and you just screw in the wideband and you're good to go there. I added all these different uh, little toggle switches here. So there's some configuration differences between the 850 and the X70 and the 960s and etc. So there's some configuration differences between the fuel pump, the AC control, and then also here is a switch for your cam sensor voltage for if you want to run an ME7 cam sensor. Cleaned up the map and barra sensors. I added some more filtering. So that's quite improved there. And then of course down here, we have some analog switches. So basically the stock MS3 Pro module has two extra analog inputs. And uh, these are switches to either wire it to the AC pressure sensor or the MAF sensor. So you can optionally use those sensors if you want, or you can flip these switches and provide external inputs. I did have to get rid of the eight extra ADCs to put this module in here and have enough uh, pins. So that has been replaced. So there's no longer eight extra ADCs, uh, just two extra. And of course I added a spot for an AW5042 LE module. If you wanna add, eventually I wanna add full support for things like, um, you know, retarding ignition timing on shifts, full idle compensation control. And right now I just have these two little jumpers to kind of trick things, but eventually I'll design that module. You know, if people do wanna fully have full support for the stock TCU, it can do that. Cause there's one other signal, like uh, I think it's the RPM slash torque signals missing. And it doesn't throw any codes as is, but eventually I can add full support for that. And I do want to develop a, a TCU as well, but that's later. So yeah, I also added some fuses. So I got a fuse for the MS3 Pro module and a fuse for the wideband. So just cleaning things up a little bit. For this module too, so the new, this is the version 1.0 MS3 Pro module. There's a version 2.0 module. I've showed it a few times before, but it has some extra ADCs that they're going to be adding uh, support for in the firmware soon. So eventually I'll have a little harness for extra ADCs and inputs from the main board. What I also want to do is add some extra ADCs to this module as well. So you could either use this module for extra ADCs or for full support for the AW5042LE stock TCU. So just wanted to share a quick update. Things are looking pretty good. Did some testing. I'll show some things that are out in the garage with the wideband. And I want to get these for sale ASAP. Yeah, same pricing, optional wideband package. But I can start selling a couple each month and really get these going and put all these funds towards, you know, maybe the ME7, the ME9 version, the TCU. There's a couple other developments I want to start working on. But for now, Helmoose, I want to focus on these electronics uh, and get some of these things up for sale and then of course for the case we'll have the standard aluminum case that I've been selling so I got everything hooked up here on the uh, test car got the ECO in and then basically it'll 
come with this harness here for the wide band and I just have it temporarily run. It would be best to probably run it up through here and down. But I just quickly swapped out the uh, front O2, uh, the front narrow band with the uh, LSU 4.9 and the harness. Gave it vacuum, USB for the computer, and this already has a built-in. All the 98s and the M4497s have built-in uh, IAT sensors. <clears throat> They're ambient sensors, but works good enough. And then you can see I can come over to here, turn the car on, and you can see the AFR gauge is reading. There you can see it warmed up. And well, now it's gonna start warming up now that it reads 14.8. And then once it warms up after about 30 seconds, it will, uh, should read full lean because I don't have the car running. So let's see what happens. There we go, warmed up and now full lean. And then if we go back to the car, And see that red LED down there? That's actually the 14.7 module. It blinks when it's warming up and then it's solid when it's warmed up. So yeah, everything's working good on that wideband module. Oh, yeah, you can see it's working. See it's running real lean. I gotta clean up this uh, tune for this specific car a little bit, but you can see it's a uh, surgeon lining up with it going lean, so. Wideband, integrated wideband's working uh, really well. There you go. There you go. A little comes up. Yeah. So, wideband's working real good.